Hi creative friends, it's Kerri Ann here from Shabby Art Boutique. Uh, from time to time I get questions about fussy cutting and I've had a few this week so I thought it was probably a good time to pop in and give you my personal top tips for fussy cutting, uh, the tools and the best techniques to use. So let's start with the tools. You're going to need both scissors and a sharp knife but having the correct scissors will make a huge difference. So for fussy cutting, you require a pair of scissors that have um, that are small, have very sharp blade and a pointy tip. Now, these are my personal favourites. There are lots of brands and um, different types of scissors on the market and everyone has their own personal favourites. These are the ones I've used. I've, this is my second pair I've had of these, so they are my favourites. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why. Um, First of all, I love that it has a safety catch on it, so it holds the scissors shut when you're not using them. Um, a small tip here, always use your scissors just for paper. Same goes with your scalpel knife. So just keep that in your toolkit just for your paper crafts. So having the safety catch on them, it's just, it makes it, it's a safety thing, having them in your kit. Uh, the other thing I love about them is they are spring loaded. So there's a the spring in here. It does all the work for you. Now, if you're like me and you've got arthritis in your hands, um, that is really helpful. It does all the work and it just it just uh, makes it so much you know, easier for you to do. The third thing I love about them is they have, it's the, it's the design of them. They have these little indents here. So one's for your thumb and then the handle fits firmly in the heel of your hand. And then the other indent here is where your, your index finger goes. So it's really comfortable to hold. So with that spring doing all the work, these are really easy to use. Now with the knife, look, once again, there are lots of scalpel blades on the market. Uh, you'll pick them up in discount stores just for a couple of dollars, the, uh, the metal ones. They're not terribly comfortable to use. And if you're only doing a little bit of cutting, they're fine. Uh, if you're going to do more cutting in your craft work, I would always suggest getting a rubber tipped or rubber, sorry, rubber handled one. They're just more comfortable to hold. Uh, as I said, lots, on the, lots of brands on the market. This one is the Tonic Studio one by Tim Holtz. Um, the reason I like this one particularly is it's got the retractable blade. So it came comes with uh, three or four blades and plus you can buy them um, individually as well. So that's been a favourite of mine for a long, long time and very easy to hold. I hold it like a pencil um, and I do do a lot of my fussing cutting with my blade. Now let's talk about technique. How you actually use your scissors is really important. Uh, the scissors should only open and close. That's the one mistake that a lot of people make. You hold them in your right hand and they simply open and close. They do not move. They do not do the cutting. You feed the paper with your left hand into your scissors and you let the paper do all the work and your right hand just opens and closes the scissors. That will give you the best cut. Um, also for a cleaner cut, feed the image into the blade of the scissors. So down here, down close to the handle end, not at the tip. So I'm just going to show you on here. See how I'm using this bottom section down here in the blade? I'll just angle it a bit so you can see. That's also another tip too when you are fussy cutting. Angle your blade away from the item you're cutting so that you can always see the design area. And cut out of the design. Now you probably noticed that I was cutting this design that's already made into a smaller piece. I do that with all of my uh, fussy cuts. So if you've printed off a whole, say, A4 or letter size sheet and you've got lots of different items on there, I cut them all out roughly to cut away a lot of that negative white space. It's going to be much easier to work on a smaller piece um, that you can cut in and out of um, than trying to work with a great big piece of paper. So you just saw on that one then, I cut straight down this edge here and then out. I also, for cutting areas like this around the feet, I'll cut those areas and just make it easier on myself. I'll just go right around the feet there before I come back in. I'll come back to that other little area in a moment. You can just cut in small sections and once again, cut out of the design. By coming back in and cutting in again, you can get a nice little point on that. Now that's not as important when you're cutting with a white border like I'm cutting now, but if you're cutting close to the design edge, then it's important to cut in and out of your design. So I'm just going to finish that little one off here now. This is just a simple little bird. It's a very easy one to cut. I'm cutting it with a border. I'll talk about borders in just a second. Once again, I'm going to cut out of this design. 
So I've got another intricate area here. Okay. Now I would normally, personally, because I like to use a knife, I just come in and do the feet area with a knife because it's just so much quicker. But also, you know, I'm a little bit fussy with it. I'll just take off the edge there, cut out there. It's just so much easier to do that bit with a knife than trying to get your scissors in there. There you go. Same with this little bit up here. You can just cut that out with a knife. It's just it's it's just easier, I think, than trying to get your scissors into those little areas. I hope you're picking that up on the camera. It's sort of hard when you're doing it and you can't see what everyone else can see. Using a knife means you can get right into to the little fine pointed areas there. Can you see in there? So that was a really simple design to cut. Now I will just talk to you about, I cut a white border on that and this is something people ask me all the time. And I'll show you an example with the two I've got here. So these are two of the cakes from the tea time kit. You can see on this one, I've cut a white border around the outside. On this one, I've cut close to the edge of the design and people ask me all the time, what is the correct way to do it? There is no correct way, it doesn't matter. It's up to you how you do it. But I will say, using a white border like this one, so it's only a couple of mil, it's probably about two to three mil. Uh, if you're layering, if you're doing like a card with lots of flowers and things in it, and you um, want to define the layers, having that little tiny white border is going to help you do that. Also for people beginning with fussy cutting, I always suggest do a white border. It's very forgiving. So it doesn't matter if you cut really close to the design and then on the next little bit you cut you know, a couple of mils out. It's not going to matter. Your actual design remains the same. However, if you're starting out and you still haven't really refined your technique yet and you're cutting right on the edge of the design, if you take a chunk out, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really obvious. So, you know, it's, it comes down to practice, I guess, and what you feel comfortable with. I personally, for a lot of my stuff, you'll notice that I cut close to the edge of the design. That's the way I like it to look that way. Um, but there's other people who just like it to have a white border. So it, it comes down to personal uh, taste and also your expertise with using your tools. And once again, it's the same as any crafting technique. It's all practice. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Uh, and then you'll know what you feel most comfortable doing. So there is no right or wrong. You can do it either way. It's what suits you the best. So we've discussed the white borders um, and general cutting. Let's talk about why I use a knife. Now, this is, is, once again, this is personal taste. A design like this that has a negative white area in it, and you will see it a lot in different designs. Um, obviously the teacups, the handle area is, is a negative area. We don't need that. Um, there's another little piece just in here. Um, I probably wouldn't cut out the little sections in here unless it was, you know, didn't help the design. But there are a lot of designs, especially with flowers on them, that you need to get in there and remove some of those white areas. And a lot of people don't. Uh, as I said, it is personal taste. I prefer to see those areas cut out. So when you do that, it's easier, far easier with a knife than doing that, trying to do it with scissors. And I guess that's why a lot of people don't cut them out is because they only use scissors, but a knife will get those out really quickly. Um, so yeah, as I would for any of these designs, I would cut away all the other rest of the paper. So I've cut the design down to a smaller, smaller size. And I always cut the negative areas out first before I cut the outside design. So I'm just going to, I'm just probably doing this a bit quicker than I normally would because I've got you here watching. Just keep turning your design around. You don't have to keep cutting all in one line. Same with your scissors. You don't always have to keep cutting all in one line and you don't need to always keep cutting in the same direction. Just do what's really comfortable for you. Same when you're cutting with scissors. You don't have to start cutting and just keep cutting all in one go. It's not necessary. Just cut in small sections. You'll get a better result. There you go. And I've removed that inside bit. And I probably on this design would also just take out that little bit just there. So just keep turning it around. Go in the direction that feels most comfortable. Pop that bit out. You can see with the grey behind, I've just cut those little bits out there in the, that area. And then now I would come in with the scissors. You've got to have a starting point, so I'll just start in here. Now, I cut around that intricate design because I'm coming back to that. I'm not going to try and do that in one go with my scissors. 
It's a leaf, so I'm going to cut out of my design. Okay. I would personally use my knife for this next bit. You might try and use your scissors, but I just think that would just be so much easier. So it's a small little delicate designed area. I'd get in there with my knife. See how quick that was? Far easier than trying to do that with your scissors. Now, another thing I would recommend, when you come to, um, when I'm designing, I'm designing what aesthetically looks good. And I try and keep in mind that people are going to sometimes use them as fussy cuts, but I also have in the back of my mind that people are using these as PNGs and they're going to layer them over other designs. So for example, this might be, if you're um, doing your own Photoshop things, you might be using this in a card and you're going to layer other things behind it. So it looks nice to have those background leaves. They balance the design. If you're looking at it from a fussy cutting um, way, it, it's, it's, it's harder to cut around those. I get that. So some people would simply just cut around the whole area and not cut out all those little individual bits. I'll just cut this out so you can see that bit. So there's a perfect example here. So I'm just going to cut around these. Okay. So I know a lot of people would just cut it out simply like that. I would go in with a knife and cut out all these little bits. But see these little tiny bits here? No one's going to try and cut around those. These ones here and these ones here. If you're fussy cutting and it's not going to affect your design, don't cut them. Just cut them out of it. Don't feel stressed about trying to cut those little tiny bits in. I'm just going to cut around the rosebud that's there and up to the next rosebud. Okay, so I've cut out those little bits of flowers there. They're of no use to the design. They can go. You've still got your nice little roses and things here. I would personally go in here. This is just me, though. You don't have to do this. But I would go in and cut out around these leaves and keep those couple of bigger leaves. Once again, I'm cutting these really quickly because we're on camera. I don't want to waste your time. But I just want to give you a general look at how I do it. Okay, and you just would never get in those with in there with those scissors, but you can certainly do it with a knife. So I've retained those leaves there, but I've cut away those tiny little ones that were just there. It's not going to affect the design overly. And you might decide you don't want that big rose up there, and you would just cut around the design and eliminate that. So you know, feel free to you know do what suits your design of your project best. Um, so I'm just looking back here now at that tail. I would go in at this point and cut that tail out with the knife. You could go in there also with the scissors. It's just not as easy. But if you are, you use this end of the scissors right here at the base. It's just harder to get into those tiny little areas there with the scissors, but... That's not too bad. This bit's going to be a little bit harder here. Actually, I'm not even going to try it with the scissors. I think that's a knife job. And once again, you can see I'm going in the opposite direction. Did I get that bit off? Oh, I didn't cut that bit off. There we go. There we go. So I've done that little section there. I'd probably go around this part here in the scissors and use the knife for the top bit up here and the scissors down here. So this is a very intricate fussy cut. But, you know, it's up to you how much of that you include. Uh, ones like this, I obviously did this one with a knife. And I kept coming in and out with the cuts around the flower. This round here is really easy to do with the scissors. So that's just a few tips to, to help you with your fussy cutting. Uh, it, it really is. It's a practice thing. Um, the white borders, that's also just personal choice. So it's really just a matter of having a go, seeing what works best for you and trying different tools. Find what tools work best for you. I do hear a lot from people that, you know, they can't do fussy cutting because they've got arthritis. And I get it. It's hard. It, does, it is hard on your hands. But if you find the right tools, you might find that it, it's not impossible. And getting especially a spring-loaded pair of scissors is really going to help you no end. So one last tip. Matte gel uh, medium. It's uh, one that's not discussed very often, but it's something that I used to use in my business a lot. And uh, I do use it when I'm doing fussy cuts that are really intricate and detailed. 
So before you start cutting your design, while it's still in its A4 or letter size form, if you paint the back of your paper with a coat of your gel matte medium, this is just the Liquitex one, but there are different brands. Um, so if you paint that on and let it dry, it just gives that extra stability to your paper and prevents tearing. So if you're doing something that's really intricate, um, or you're doing like scroll work or anything like that, that um, usually you would use those with things like on cards. Um, so doing a coat of your gel mediums, just be able to stabilize that paper and make it much easier to cut. So it's one that's not spoken about often, but it is really helpful. And it's something we do in professional studios a lot. Um, and you know, if you're doing a lot of mixed media work, you're going to have your uh, gel matte medium anyway. And so, yeah, it's a good little tip. So put that one aside. So I hope that uh, overall those tips have been really useful uh, for you and um, help you with your fussy cutting. Thanks for watching.